My, 32M, wife, 33F, is hiding her recent hospital visit from me, and I don't know why. A friend of mine suggested that this site could help me gain some insight and tips on how to handle this situation, so I am willing to give you guys a shot. As the title says, my wife is refusing to show me proof of her last visit to the hospital. This is strange as she and I have always been transparent about our medical visits since we started dating. For context, I first met my now wife when I was 24 at the local gym. For 8 years, we have been a dynamic duo and very open and honest with each other. She is the love of my life, and I could not imagine a day without her. This recent visit was not for some physical checkup, but to see her fertility rates. We have discussed having kids around the fourth year of our relationship, so two years after getting married. The talks were really only about making sure we were financially ready before bringing anyone into the world, which we both agreed on being a few years away. After moving twice for work, we are now both well into our careers and earning a good salary with a home purchase in mind at the moment. However, like many you have seen in the news, now may not be the time to buy with a possible market crash. Our friend group have been announcing their pregnancies as of late, and I guess my wife was getting excited about the idea of a kid. After discussing it last year, we decided that it was time to try and start a family. Month after month, no positive pregnancy result. Everything has been standard, and no period has been missed from her. I was nervous about the idea that I was just stuck with shooting blanks, so my wife and I scheduled, attended, and participated in the process of checking my sperm count. Suffice to say, I am shooting nothing but strong swimmers ready to do their job. While I felt immediate relief about these results, I noticed my wife grew anxious about her fertility. This is what has been the issue of our relationship, which is new as we have always been open, honest, and non-argumentative with one another. This lead to a minor pause in our trying attempts as she became uncomfortable with the thought that it was due to her. I tried to comfort her as best as I could by reassuring that I would love her just as much on our wedding day as I would with hearing the results. She is my one and only, and no potential kid would change that. After a few months, she said that she was going to meet up with a fertility doc to check her out. The appointment was when I was out of the the country for work, which is fine as it is just them getting samples for testing from my understanding. About a month after the appointment, I come home to my wife crying. She handed over the results which declared her to be infertile. I would be lying if I said I was not crushed on this news, but I made sure to make my wife's health the top priority. Having her family health history or involvement would have been great, but her parents passed away near the end of high school and were cut off from their family due to the incident for my wife. This means that, outside of therapy, I have been her reliable shoulder. It has been tough on me to hear how sad this has made her, but I have continued to do my best to support here. I guess this is the part where things go wonky. During a meeting with our friend group, one of the wives came up to me to ask about how she is holding up. At this point, they knew about my wife's fertility and this friend of ours was also given the non-fertile outcome. However, through luck, power, or a mix of both, she had become pregnant. She has been a lifeline for my wife and I through this struggle, so I was open with her about it. I even sent her the photo my wave gave me. The next day, I get a phone call from around noon. She broke the news to me that the results were from Google Images, and provided the link to it. Sure enough, there it is. I felt such a mix of emotions when seeing this. When I sent the link of the image my wife showed to me, she said that it doesn't matter as she had met with the doctor about this in person. Well if that is the case, then the hospital could be in legal trouble from us. Therefore, I need the proof that she went to these visits, and now I am being stonewalled at seeing these appointment confirmations. While I may have only had two relationships prior to meeting my wife, none were as perfect than it has been with my beautiful wife. What has me stressed out is the fact that I caught her lie about going to a doctor to check on her fertility. This is the only lie, outside of the small white lies about not eating the last bit of my homemade jerky, she has made to me that I caught. What do I do? My guess is that she is not actually ready for children, for any number of reasons and has continued or started on birth control, and never went to the doctor about her fertility at all. Sounds like you two need to sit down and actually open up. A therapist helping out with it wouldn't be remiss either. Sounds like she doesn't want to have a child, she should be honest with you so that you can marry someone who does, it'll hurt but you won't waste any more time. What does the friend who discovered the image online think? Does she have a theory? I don't think I would google a friend's image. Sounds like she had her suspicions? Or maybe simply knew enough about infertility to know that the wife's story didn't make sense. 
She doesn't want kids and she's lying to you about it. She needs to come clean. You need to ask yourself if you're pressured her too much, or alternatively whether you've been blind to other manipulative behavior. She has been lying to you and it has gone so far that she's proving false documents. Maybe she had an abortion? Maybe she's cheating? Maybe she doesn't want children? Maybe she has an STD? It is not normal for her to go from sharing everything on this subject to nothing at all. Especially because she's been caught in this lie. You need to sit her down and explain that you want answers. If she refuses, ask her to leave until she can be honest with you. Do not relent on this because she is clearly doing something extremely shady. Do not accept this behavior because it will only get worse and you deserve the truth no matter what it is. Focus on the fact that the communication has broken down between you, and that your relationship as it is now is unsustainable. This is not a threat, it is simple fact that your relationship is becoming changed and destabilized now that this confusion has entered the marriage. I would seriously look at couples counseling to address this. A mediator can help direct the conversation and avoid deflections and distractions. Find one that has experience with fertility issues. Make it clear to your wife that seeing a counselor is not because the relationship is failing. Instead it's a way to keep it healthy and prevent it reaching a breaking point. It's the old prevention being better than trying to find a cure. Good luck. How do I survive dating when it is always the same story? I am currently fighting a wave of depression. 27 female. I was seeing a guy, 27 male. Things were going great. We had the same values, interests, goals, sexual chemistry. Suddenly he broke it off for confusing reasons and said he didn't feel a spark. But I felt a spark and really liked him. He wouldn't listen to anything I had to say and broke up with me, even though he contradicted everything he said previously about wanting a LTR with me. This keeps happening and I don't understand why. My friends and the guys themselves all have nice things to say about time, that I'm the total package, and it always ends the same way. I've worked so hard on myself in therapy, going to the gym, developing my own passions and hobbies, and yet after one two months, they always always leave. No matter what I do to try to prevent it by not having sex too soon, asking them what they're looking for early. They seem so genuine and then leave without a real reason. I physically feel like I cannot take being hurt again. I am at a place in life where I want to get married, start a life, have kids, and it's going nowhere. I traveled for several years and moved back to America to settle down and I just can't keep a man around. I am so tired of doing it alone and I want to share my life with someone. I just want to go back out and travel and escape. I don't understand how people survive dating. How do you not get attached and hurt when people leave? TLDR. Sad over another failed relationship. So depressed I cannot speak. How do you survive dating when you are a deeply feeling person? Op. This sucks and I know it really hurts. But, have you ever considered that you might assign much a lot of importance to relationships really quickly? Only knowing someone for 4-8 weeks is almost no time at all. And it's possible you both want a long-term relationship and get on really well, but that after dating and trying things they just don't feel it's a good romantic fit. I'm not saying it's you, not at all. But in reading your post, that's where my mind went. 26 female here and I get it. I don't have any serious significant other in sight. I want kids and want to get something more traditional than what I have and I feel like my clock is running out. Connections are harder to come by and everyone just wants to hook up and be done or they're just not serious about anything more. I think traveling is the opposite of what you need. If you travel, you're going to cut off the ability to grow some roots in the area and actually meet someone. Just a thought. Relationships carry the innate risk that you will get hurt. Not going to lie, there are a lot of people who do shitty things to other people. There are also, frankly, a lot of people to compete with. When I was your age, dating someone internationally was rare. Now people go everywhere, constantly are bombarded with new faces, cultures etc. The world is an endless tray of oysters to explore. I think this makes people just a bit more shallow, I fear. Anyway, bottom line is it is tough out there. However, there are also loads of awesome people you haven't met yet. In the meantime, consider a hiatus and reclaim solitude. Read the crappy stories on here. Learn what you can. Grieve properly. Try meditation. Incense. Burn sage. Get out town. Volunteer. Do what you love. Is it possible that once you find out what they're looking for, you try to become that? Maybe don't ask that question so early. Maybe just be your authentic self, you sound really cool, and you will be what they're looking for. Is there a common thread? Some particular thing that happens at that one-two months point? 
I'm wondering if you are possibly giving off too intense vibes? Talking about long term after only a few months is early and sometimes people say things so your feelings don't get hurt or they want them to be true but they aren't or it fizzled out because they feel too much pressure. Perhaps you are even fooling yourself into thinking more of the relationship than what is actually there. Rose-colored glasses can often be hard to see clearly through. My girlfriend is begging me to shave my mustache off, but I really like it. I have a really cool mustache, in my opinion. I've been growing it out and trimming it for about three weeks. It's a great mustache, and I think it gets me more respect. But she isn't a fan of it. She has many complaints. I don't want to get rid of the mustache, I know it looks good. It compliments my face, like it does for Henry Cavill, or a lot of other men who accentuate similar features. I don't want to part ways with my mustache, but my girlfriend says it's annoying, and also I don't look good with a mustache and she rather me be clean shaven or just grow out a beard. So, I'm thinking about compromising and shaving it off. What do you think, should I? It's your body your rules, but that obviously doesn't mean that you can't take your partner's opinion into account. I don't like it when my husband doesn't shave, but that doesn't stop me from letting him not shave when he feels like that. He just knows my preferences and he does with it whatever he wants. Keep it if you want but it probably feels scratchy and itchy when she kisses you. Or maybe you remind her of her dad. Lol. Honestly I hate beards and tashes. My husband knows this. He knows if he has one I'm not going to kiss him because I hate the feel. If he wants to grow one however that's up to him I won't stop him. I just won't touch it. We're gonna need a pic of the stash to give you a solid opinion. Show us a pic and we'll tell you lol. NGL just from you saying how good it looks three times in the post. I have the feeling it probably doesn't look as good as you're saying. I could be proven wrong. It's completely your choice to keep it or not but maybe ask your girlfriend why she doesn't like it. Boyfriend says I should do things the normal way. We argue a lot about it. Minor stupid things but it is really frustrating. Example from today. Boyfriend saw I'm pressing the garlic through garlic press without removing the peel from the garlic. He went, what are you doing? Don't you know that you should peel the garlic before pressing? I asked why, and he told me that everyone is peeling the garlic before pressing and how I ever came up with the idea not to do it. I told him that the peel stays in the press anyway, and the soft white part goes to my meal. And that I saw cooks doing the same thing so I guess it's not a bad thing. He told me that I should peel it because people were always doing it that way and that he hates that I always try to be an unique snowflake instead of normal. I did some googling and showed him few articles about how there is literally no need to peel the garlic if you use press and that some people think it's the biggest pro of using the press, because it's even easier to clean. Even Wikipedia page said that you don't need to peel. He got kinda offended and said once again that people were always peeling the garlic and this is how everyone does it. I said that not everyone, mentioning the professional cooks again, and that if people didn't try to do things not the normal way, we wouldn't have many useful devices, they would never get invented. Like, the garlic press itself. If dude was inventing the press and someone saw it and yelled at him, WTF are you doing? Everyone just uses knives to chop it. No need to do it that way. Do it like a normal person duh. He could give up and the garlic press wouldn't be there today. He said that I can excuse every weird behavior with such metaphor and he is still going to peel the garlic. Also sometimes when I start wondering about something, let's say, unusual, like can flowers grow in a rotten corpse? He says that it's stupid to think about and that I am immature, should grow up and start thinking about something more serious. Sometime later one of his fav YouTubers does a video can flowers grow in a rotten corpse? Insane results. My boyfriend just grabs popcorn and runs all excited to watch this super interesting cool vid. It's frustrating. I told him many times that I want to become a scientist and improve people's lives, and science is in a big part asking silly questions and doing weird experiments. He said that the world doesn't need my changes and that probably I should leave it to more intelligent people. I mentioned that I've scored 127 on IQ test which is not Mensa level but still higher than average, and I was a teenager then and my ADHD wasn't diagnosed so I couldn't focus properly on the test too. He said he doesn't believe the IQ tests and that my ADHD can mentally disable me a bit, and the result was higher because I was lucky. I told him that there is a chance I was lucky but I don't know and that I want to retake the test. And that research shows that people with ADHD tend to have higher IQ so I am really interested how would I score now. I asked him to go take the test together. 
He got offensive and said that IQ tests are bullshit and just told me to stop trying improving stuff. I feel weird now and wonder if he's right. Sump means I break stuff when trying to improve them, but sometimes I manage to fix them and actually improve them. Exploring and trying gave me many burns, cuts and other wounds, but also gave me much knowledge about how different devices work and what is the purpose of certain parts, things, behaviors, body parts. I always thought that trying and failing is a big part of science and progress, and people always say to learn on your mistakes and that's what I do, but do I take it too seriously? I told him many times that I want to become a scientist and improve people's lives, and science is in a big part asking silly questions and doing weird experiments. He said that the world doesn't need my changes and that probably I should leave it to more intelligent people. What an unsupportive prick. You're dating a narcissist. Do you want to be dating a narcissist? I think you deserve better than a narcissist. You need to dump him. Then read Why Does He Do That by Lundy Bancroft so you can recognize the signs of abuse in others. This man is slowly tearing you down so you'll think you're worthless. You'll doubt everything you do and be easier for him can tall. Confident, secure men do not behave like this. It has nothing to do with the garlic. Plenty of people leave the peel on when they use a garlic press. It doesn't matter though. If you start peeling the garlic he'll tell you that you are putting the garlic in the press the wrong way round. The world does need you changes. Be smart and dump this pass now while you can still get out. He sounds fucking exhausting. You need to peel him first then garlic. He is insulting your intelligence, your goals, and how you do things. Do not take anything he says at face value. Keep being you and maybe find a new BF. He sounds intellectually threatened by you. He is trying to take you down a peg to make himself feel superior. That's textbook narcissistic behavior.